My candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night. But ah, my foes and oh, my friends, it gives a lovely light. Edna St. Vincent Millay, 1920. While her contemporaries like T.S. Eliot and Robert Frost are more widely known, there is no question of the impact Edna St. Vincent Millay had on American poetry. Her romantic style and passion for life were ignored in her time, but since her death, she has been recognized as the Herald of New Women. Born in 1892, Millay was raised in Maine, where her mother, Cora, would read the classics like Shakespeare to Edna and her sisters. Though Edna wanted to be a concert pianist, her hands were determined too small. She turned from the ivory keys to a pen and ink, taking up writing. She began gaining notice for her writing in her teens, and by age 20, she received widespread acclaim for her poem, Renaissance, still today credited as her finest work. The poem is focused on existential ideas around human existence, the limits our lives put on us, and the constraints we put on ourselves. The world stands out on either side, no wider than the heart is wide. Above the world is stretched the sky. No higher than the soul is high. After studying at Vassar College, Malay moved to Greenwich Village in New York, where she would begin to write her more controversial works focused on politics, feminism, and homosexuality. In 1923, she was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for The Ballad of the Harp Weaver, becoming one of the first women to win the honor. It was in this work she popularized the phrase, my candle burns at both ends. That same year, she married Eugene Jan Bosevain, a self-proclaimed feminist who would take up all the domestic responsibilities so Edna could focus on her writing. In 1925, the couple bought a 635-acre blueberry farm in Austerlitz called Steepletop. It was here, many critics and scholars say, where Millay did some of her best writing, including a commission by the Metropolitan Opera to pen the lyrics for a new work, The King's Henchman. It was in the 1930s that modernism in poetry gained popularity and Malay began to fade from public consciousness. She rarely left Steepletop after a series of ailments and injuries. In 1950, she died at her home in Austerlitz. In the decades to follow with the growing feminism movement, my work was revisited for its expressions of freedom and individualism written during a time many women were stifled and silenced. 